Um, so good evening, dear friends, um, dear uh, guests. Uh, it is um, welcome to the first event of the Art and Science Center in 2021. It is an honor actually to start this year with an artist talk by Robertina Shibjanic, an internationally awarded and internationally exhibited artist and researcher. Um, in the focus of Robertina's work is oriented towards the exploration of water, habitats, and marine life, and help us to investigate and to tackle the philosophical question that lie on the intersection of art, science, and technology. And in November 2020, uh, Robertina held a workshop for the second year students of the Art and Science Master's program at Itmo University, which was called Aquaforming. So during this workshop, the students were introduced to the problems of invisible water pollutants. And the goal of their work was to um, make those invisible anthropogenic pollutants and the, their effect on water habitats visible. Uh, so during this artist talk, Robertina will um, tell about, the pro about her own projects that deal with the biological, cultural, and bi biopolitical, I'm sorry, cultural and ecological realities of aquatic environments, and also tell briefly about the workshop that was held at ITMO. And some of our students will briefly um, tell about their projects that were developed during the workshop. It is a great pleasure to hand it over to Robertina right now. So, Robertina, you're welcome. Thank you for this um, very warm and um, in-depth uh, pre um, presentation already. I'm happy to be starting uh, my professional year also this year with uh, in this uh, department and University of Itmo. Uh, in, um, so I will start with my presentation. Second. So as um, Aliyah mentioned, in my work, especially in the last uh, decade, I would say I'm very much focused on understanding the um, changes and challenges which are happening in uh, aquatic uh, environments. And um, within my work, I spend lots of time in different research centers and um, marine stations. So in 2014, where is kind of like a, a strong start of what I started to research, um, I spent my residency time for three months at the marine station in Izmir in Turkey, where I was invited by the Trienal of Contemporary Arts, post Izmir, uh, that they wanted to work on understanding of like how to combine better to help each other to work with each other to the artist scientist and um, what would be the methodologies of doing that so it was great for me to start my professional way of going more into marine knowledge through that and the organism which we have been very interested and focused in it was a jellyfish because there was like a big influx in um, beginning of the year it was like i think january february similar like now and it was like the izmir bay was full of um, jellyfish which is wasn't uh, such a normal condition so we have been like very curious why this happened and then during this um, research and deep in that rethinking, um, in the next two years, I did develop in 2014 and uh, till 2016, two new projects, which they are called Aurelia One Plus Cards. And the projects where I was like working a lot on this understanding, what is it with this animal, which is so foreign, but at the same time, very mysterious, but very interesting for me also. And I started with the research of um, presenting that. So instead, of, mm -hmm. so instead of the research when I was working on, I was very much uh, intrigued with the knowledge of um, the immortality, you know, the theoretical biological immortality with some of the species of uh, jellyfish have. 
And I was very striking by this information because uh, for this was for me something which I think this kind of like quest for the youth and quest for understanding that is something which there is lots of different uh, cultures which they are aiming towards the goals. So this was like one of the backbones of the research and um, I forgot to mention before I started to talk, so if there will be something unclear or uh, there would be some questions, please be, feel free to ask me and also ask us into the chat and we can answer because on the end of the talk, I hope that we will have also some of the discussion. So Aurelia one plus hertz protovivo generator, the first part is installation where the jellyfish and the robotic system, they're collaborating with each other. So there is no human interaction in this sense, but it's more interaction between the organism and the robotic sculpture. The second part of the project. Mm -hmm. The second part of the project was um, developed then more into relationship as humans towards the non-human entities. And by this one, I decided to work on like me and Jellyfish, we are performing together in the space, in the galleries or performance spaces. And what we try to achieve and what I try to speak about it is like, especially this, that there have been always this assumption that the culture, communication, and this kind of, uh, that this is our human ability but I think that there's also lots of different species which we are sharing this earth with, that they are also able to do that. So um, I will play a bit of the, I will play a bit of this performance. So you will have an idea how does it look like also because um, the sound is navigated partly by me and partly by the jellyfish. So the system and the programming part, we did like that, that um, the jellyfish, their contraction and their movements in the tanks and how they're working about it, uh, pretty, um, they're tracked and they're triggering different particles inside of the sound piece. So the sound composition, like uh, the environment, which is um, presented through that, it's collaborative, so us, me and Jellyfish, we are doing it together. And as these kind of projects are very complex and it's not only one person doing them, it's uh, I always like to give this kind of shout out to all my colleagues and collaborators, which they have been helping me to develop the piece. The first piece, which I was showing before, the installation with the robotic sculpture was first time presented at Kopelica Gallery. And this performance was first time presented actually in uh, Paris at uh, Le Cube uh, is a center for contemporary arts and um, with this piece we have been performing also at Ars Electronica and different venues and places uh, since this is like um, yeah, since five years and maybe you notice there's also special thanks to different aquariums because what they try to work on and which I'm very pedant with this work is also that animals which they are with me, my collaborators during the performance, they're coming from aquariums and after the performance, they're always going back to the aquarium. So I try to um, not stress the animals too much because I know that to bring the animal into the public space and so on is of course other structure, but here by this piece, I really wanted to do this because I was really interested to present um, this experience of meeting uh, something which is so unknown to us. As I mentioned before, in the beginning, I spent lots of time in different marine stations and uh, residences next to the shores or sometimes also on the boats and ships in the oceans and seas. So uh, during these years, when I was starting to develop um, 
especially this piece Aurelia, I started to also record with hydrophone. This looks like this, uh, is, is uh, the picture behind me also. And this with hydrophone, uh, I was very stri striken by the sonic experience of the underwater world, because my idea was that there is like this kind of beautiful, serene, magical place, which is still there, of course, but there is also lots of boats, ships and tankers and so on, as you see them also here on these photos. And uh, this is like really strongly influencing the aquatic life and um, aquatic relationships. So always when you put the hydrophone into the water, it's like underwater microphones, which they are dealing with more with vibrational kind of sensorium. It's very interesting to what we can hear and how we can hear it. So this Akotusin is also like a project which is going on since 2016. And why I like to point out that the sound is so important, especially the underwater worlds, is because of the... As humans, we are very much um, visual animals. But instead of the fluid world of aquatic um, situation, all these situations are changing. So already in 200 meters, we are very much in the twilight zone. So we can see a bit, but not so sharp anymore. And then it starts to be darker and darker. And because of that, lots of animals also develop this kind of way of like, um, so sound is one of very strong sensorium for them to orient, but also for communicate to exchange uh, and so on between themselves. So especially because of our human imprint and how strongly we are present with all the different drilling and other activities which we are around, um, there is lots of interfering with the animal world. And with Aquatusin, the project uh, is mission and project uh, like conceptual idea is very simple. It speaks about this kind of underwater noise pollution. And uh, many times also build hydrophones with people and we go to different localities with uh, participants of the workshops to experience that and trying to understand because I always see that there is a difference if I speak about that or we can all listen to it. And what I tried, uh, started to develop then through the years is like different uh, compositions from different localities. So I always like to put uh, longitude and um, explain the name with the specific locality where I was recording and then also with the ocean, sea or area to understand where this was recorded. If you don't mind, I will uh, play now a bit of the sound just that you get like idea what I'm talking about. Uh, on the beginning, this sound which you hear now, this is mostly shrimps which they can be very long, uh, loud and very present in the oceans and seas. And after some while, this is kind of like uh, the most common serenity of the oceans and seas. And this is like the reality which can come also with lots of So try not to be too loud now with this, but uh, the reality is like this, that there is lots of different noise pollutants also around. And uh, the project uh, is resulting then as installation or many times as a performance also, where, because I develop also my vinyls, so I try to bring this with different uh, mediums near to the public to speak about this kind of situations and um, changes and challenges which they're happening in the oceans and seas. What I think is very important, and I try to um, open my platform, my artistic platform also to other collaborators. So for instance, also when I had like this performance in Madrid, and the organizers um, managed to match me with the expert in marine bioacoustic, Paolo Lorenzo Ricarte. So we have been like talking both about the same problematic, but me as my artistic research and the scientists from her 
everyday experience and it was really great to have this exchange also for me and I think also for public. So um, with this Akotusim project, I always try to point out, you know, that, you know, eyes can be always closed, but ears, it's really hard to close. And especially for different marine species, it starts to be very challenging. And lots of them, they're changing their uh, routes, they're changing how they navigate and where they are and how they walk or um, swim around the oceans and seas because they try to, um, move away from the most load uh, routes because um, lately most of the goods like in last 50 years most of the goods which we are buying uh, using uh, on daily basis they're always coming with the ships from some other continent or countries and then project was also developed in different variations so in um, Last year in 2020, I was invited to develop together with um, William Russell, who works at Monom in um, in a really great 4D sound space studio in Berlin, and we could develop um, partly my photo scene, but then also a bit bigger story as a sonic film into this 4D system, and this was really great to experience. And then. Uh, Sometimes also as uh, here on this video had like opportunity to be at the beautiful uh, Leland Islands in um, Netherlands and there we develop um, all these recordings which we went to record with uh, participants on the workshop also and develop this into the eight speaker sound system so um, public was able to um, I will just show it a bit. So, oops, sorry. So public was able to um, really dive into the sounds because for me. I think it's very interesting always to work also on this understanding of the sound of as something which can be very surrounding us, not only like concert kind of uh, placement where there is just like two speakers. So I try to play also with this, how to present this work. And then as uh, Alina already mentioned before, like what we did also then later on with students during our workshop, I really like to speak about this kind of invisible novelties and uh, situations which they're happening in the oceans and seas. And one of these kind of hidden ones, uh, hidden pollutants, which is very, very present is also chemical pollution. This is the pollution which comes with uh, different uh, pharmaceuticals, which we are using on daily basis and goes into the sewage system and through the sewage system through the rivers and so on back to the ocean and together with colleague Gino Shutic we have been um, developing this piece at Ars Electronica and at Ur Institute in Dubrovnik so it was interesting to have case study at the river what is happening in that uh, kind of context and what is happening in the Adriatic Sea where Dubrovnik is stationed and um, the research was quite, um, I would say, at least for me, because I wasn't so much familiar with this topic. Gino Shutic, my colleague, which I was collaborating with, uh, is a bit more because he has the his biochemist by his profession. So with him, when we started to work on this and started to figure it out and read also about it, we have been both quite uh, surprised which kind of high quantities of pharmaceuticals are actually present in the oceans and seas. So this is some photos from our um, research. And what we try to um, present with this project and what we spoke about this, you know, is this, you know, where is the monster, you know, because we always have this idea of these monsters and monstrosities where they are like this big presence, but then actually this invisible chemical pollutants, which they are changing, oceans from inside out the, and are very present. And then in this kind of context, we started to speak about aqua formations. 
this means that uh, that you know like uh, as humans we are terraforming the terrestrial world is the same happening also in the oceans and seas and you know in the fluids in some different levels so here i will show you two videos from disintegration process so what we have been doing is uh, experiments in vitro experiments this means that we had um, species and did experiments with them in the sense like we gave to each of them different quantities of different pills and we have been looking how their behavior was changing and sadly also in, in some pieces like as uh, and some species, it came to disintegration of them, as you can see on this part of the screen already, and this one is also soon. So this was quite striking how um, very direct this kind of res relationship can be sometimes, you know, and also um, why we decided to work with microorganisms was also practical because in the sense of like in three months time where we had like time for doing the main res residency research, we did try to do as much as possible experiments and uh, also proofs of the concepts and so on. Uh, so, yeah, so as you see here is also no comment for to the disintegration of the animal. And um, we decided then to show the, because then was also, you know, it, something is when you do it as a research and how to show them this to the public. So we both uh, have been very intrigued to do this kind of like small capsules, like this kind of um, things where you have like uh, holograms and on these holographic uh, videos, you can see these microorganisms, how they are diluting and they're, they're in constant, constant loop happening. Uh, the copper pipes we have there because copper is one of the best uh, materials for um, it's one of the best materials for um, for that it's like uh, that there not be like so so much contagious happening but it's like uh, vice versa so viruses bacteria they cannot survive on its surface and in inside of it and um, so we had been and then also because one thing is to have these videos but we also wanted to show these photos so we did also develop also an artist book where you can um, go from the page to the page and through the pages you see this kind of disintegration process of animals and how their first the behavior changes and then disintegration because uh, especially by the microorganisms we noticed that it's really hard to speak about uh, this integration of something which we don't know. And if the only behavior changes, we can see this if we know them. And this is always interesting to see how this kind of um, relationship visible and invisible is constantly challenged, especially when working with something which is not so common and uh, that we have to still get to know it. And then the second part of the project was this year actually presented more as a platform because with Gino, we would like to work further on that. And it was also during this year's, I think, um, lots of students from ITMA also took part this year at Ars Electronica because it has this kind uh, in 2020, because it has this kind of like more online presence because of COVID and pandemia. And it was interesting for us to develop, to start to develop it further. And we started to work on um, this kind of platform to develop uh, better strategies of empathy and solidarity with oceans and seas. And especially because me and Gino, we both live very near to Adriatic Sea. We decided that this would be, you know, for some while our focus, especially inside of the context of the project Aqua Forensic. And as I mentioned before, I spent quite lots of time in um, residency spaces, but uh, this one at uh, research vessel Celtic Explorer two years ago was very special to me because um, 
I had been few times experienced this, but it's something else when you're physically on the boat for, we had been on the Atlantic Ocean for three weeks. So it was great to experience that and also to think how the relationships with the species and how the scientists are also looking into that because, you know, like research vessel Celtic Explorer, which I took part, um, is one of the most silent boats because of the system of the, um, how the engines are part of that. And for me, it was very interesting to debate this also with the scientists, which they have been on the boat, which they have been developing different non-invasive ways how to uh, observe the natural environment around us. And um, because we spoke a lot about this uh, underwater noise pollution, the sound, which I'm coming back as I was before talking about already also as this is one of the pollutions which could be like quite quickly um, resolved because the boats, they should just go slower and just rebuild some of the engines. So in this context of ecological kind of challenges, sometimes some results can be quite um, quickly done. And one of the results of this residency, it's also sound work. So I will try to also play it for a bit. So you get some idea. And it was my first time that I was working also with the vocals. And in this case, I invited to, um, to Seono Nos Noise um, singers, which they're singing in this typical Irish way. And uh, on the end, it all ended up as a radio show. And instead of this radio show, um, it was really interesting to see how the stories of the species which I encountered, they are like coming out. So I will play with just a bit this. Reduces its temperature. I'm sorry. The Atlantic Stories, Selacophilia. Cetorius Maximus and Limaria Hians. <laughs> Chapter 1 The Atlantic Ocean. of combination of the storytelling and the singing of it and the species which they are uh, in the main focus are basking shark it's like one of the biggest sharks which lives from the plankton and very small flam shell uh, which is endemic species and it's like one of the ones which everything kind of grows around it when the reefs are building and for me, it was very interesting to develop this kind of narrative, like um, story, like also in the libretto for the for the song of how both of these animals are interacting. You know, this means because basking sharks are uh, migratory species, so they're coming, going, and navigating, but still they are very celebrated, and they have been like. Um, lots of also historical connections with it because in the 18th century for instance they use their livers for um, oil for the lamps so 
each house in Ireland on, uh, was like lightning with them at that time. But now they're, of course, endangered species. I'm saying, of course, because most of um, animals are getting on these lists lately. And then on the other hand, this species, this like this tiny flame shell, there was like a big thing when we found this, like uh, the scientists, which I spent the time with them on the boat, they have been very enthusiastic when they got this as um, they have been like um, trying to catch it for some while and they haven't been successful. So it meant some uh, that the area is like rebuilding. And uh, one of the newest works, which I'm working together with Sofia Crespo, it's a um, work where um, we both, um, she is like excellent in development of AI and understanding the databases and so on. And I wanted for some while already work for uh, with this kind of, um, you know, how to understand this kind of changes of um, environmental and also what does it mean in this kind of short biological terminology of the time and what does it mean this ecological terminology of the time and also how we can you know there are some areas of the oceans which they are not mixing so well so they could be also ready for 300 years the same ponds of um, water staying somewhere so we started to work on that and from this, I would just show you also a quick snippet. In this first phase of the project, we are mostly focusing on the animals, but later on, we would like to also work with this kind of fluidity of databases and understanding of analysis of the aquatic environments. Okay, sorry. So, um, I will jump now a bit. Sorry. And this is like one of the last art pieces from my site, which I would like to speak today about them. And then I will so slowly start to explain also what was the, um, what we have been doing with students during our, um, du during our workshop and also present some of their outcomes. So Riologia, I was um, invited to collaborate with Matadero Madrid on understanding of Manzanares River, river which is like uh, going to the city of Madrid and it was for many years uh, very forgotten almost, but then a few years ago they started to work a lot, city municipality on uh, understanding what does it means to have river in the city, how to have better uh, relationships to it and they also rebuilt the river banks all around Madrid and uh, people started to have again stronger connection with the river but then it was also this um, but the commission there was like uh, this idea that we would do a workshop for 500 uh, 600 volunteers to work with them on the citizen science research and uh, this was quite challenging because I was thinking okay how to work on that to not damage the river you know so what I developed together with the team from Matadero Madrid uh, was the technique of like having uh, 40 different working groups and each of these working groups had their own mentors. So we did teach 40 different people how to do it. And each of the groups went to specific localities and they have been collecting all the um, data and information and all this was then on the end uh, presented in the common uh, infographics. So this was kind of like how should we grab people to get the knowledge about it 
And one of the things which I'm very enthusiastic about it, but for now it's uh, just in Spanish. So hopefully there will be some translation also happening. Sorry, I have to show it like this. Is this booklet is Riologia. And instead of this booklet, there's different um, techniques and uh, things explained, but what we tried to do, it wasn't only, um, it wasn't only like, um, how to come to the river and do the analysis, but it's also uh, articles written about what does it like, what kind of empathic strategies we could have to have better relationship with the nature also in our urban environments and also in the rural environments and how we could navigate that. Uh, there's also articles about the, um, there are also articles about uh, um, how to about the justice, about the or mental justice, about uh, what does it mean if uh, nature gets his own powers to be possible to navigate and so on. So we have been trying to enter the problematic from uh, different angles. And this kind of problematic from these different angles, I did try to bring also instead of the workshop, which uh, um, we did with students from ITMO and because sadly because of COVID I couldn't go physically to St. Petersburg even though that when I was invited but by Lina and Alina and the team from ITMO I was very very enthusiastic because in uh, St. Petersburg is uh, having so many rivers and streams and also it's very near to the Baltic Sea and so on so I was like really interested and intrigued to do the student uh, workshop with students but i think that even though that we had like these restrictions because of uh, covid uh, i think we managed to do quite a good job with students so what i was trying to bring into the focus of the workshop was to understand um on one the most important for me was like the matters of care, the matters of uh, relationship of this kind of like what does it means as human with uh, all these kind of uh, non-human uh, organisms which they are out there and also what does it means how to engage with this kind of uh, environments. Also in the workshop was partly lectures so I was showing also different examples of other artists and very interesting studies of um, art science related projects that they could be used as an inspiration or we could critically debate about them. And then uh, it was also practical part where the students did their experiments by themselves. And even though that we haven't been together and not been able to go physically together out, what we managed to do, it was with uh, great support from Laura and Lina, uh, we bought um, materials each of students got materials delivered to their home and uh, this was kind of like a kit so there was like simple stuff like pipettes um, pipettes and different sampling um, containers but then also like uh, instructions for different DIY devices and so on so all of them they had like tasks to go to different locations and uh, send photos to everybody so i was kind of almost feeling to be physically in st petersburg even though that it's a long time that i visited in the last time and i think this gave quite good dynamics to the workshop because uh, to avoid the zoom vertigo you know with all this kind of constant uh, online presence but still trying to do very quality work, I think it was really interesting to get all these materials and um, also work them further with them. Because some tasks, they have been done like this, that each of them, they did it by themselves. And then after some while, all of them, they have been put into the groups or they have been working by themselves on the, their way out of the topic which we took. So, um, one of the very nice events, I think it was also on the end of the workshop, uh, we had guest Alia Shakhredieva, I'm sorry, I'm bad in pronouncing sometimes, Laura Rodriguez and Tatiana Kurochkina. And uh, Tatiana Kurochkina is a co-founder and president of Coartis uh, Foundation, 
which is uh, focusing on arts and science. And for us, I think it was very great to have this possibility that students could also present, you know, because uh, I think it's very important to, to come to the point when we are presenting the stuff, but then you have the possibility to show it actually to the wider interested public. So I'm just like quickly going through different projects which have been developed through the workshop because um, then Victoria and Ulena, they will also speak about their works and their contribution. So um, some of the students uh, like Sofia and Veronica, they went more into understanding the history of the waters and water habitats and what does it mean and how to navigate that. So they started to think about building open interactive water map of St. Petersburg. And uh, then we had like uh, Roman Knishno who was like uh, very much together with Kevin. We called this Kevin, this was the animal he managed to catch on one of his trips when he went to the sample to the river. And uh, it was interesting how this relationship with this animal was developing through all the course from all of us. So all of us, we have been very curious always every morning when we started the course about the cabin. Then Victoria Gopko, who will also speak today more about her project. She went more into the exploring the boundaries of the fluidity, but I will leave the stage to her to explain it more about her project. And then Natalia Malinana, uh, she was more interested into um, algae as a material. And then it was also very interesting group of uh, Uliana, Maria and Anna, who they went more into the body of water and understanding how these kind of fluids are happening. And uh, Uliana will also speak today about her research, but she will also maybe hopefully manage also mention about what they developed out because it was quite interesting uh, which way it went. So I was hopefully, um, hopefully I gave you in this uh, 30 minutes now um, a scope of my work and what I'm doing and uh, what I'm interested in. And uh, I will give now my stage to uh, Victoria and Yulina. And then we can also have some questions and answers. Yes, Victoria. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I will share my screen now. Mm -hmm. Do you see the screen? Um, yes, we can see everything. Mm -hmm. So my name is Victoria and my project, the concept of the installation is called Fluids Exploring the Boundaries. The key question I'm concerned about uh, are where, are where is the boundary between mesmerizing and disgusting? At what point does the charm of water turn into the repulsiveness of slime? Is the formlessness of water more preferable than the claim of a clot of mucus to semi-form? And what means a stream of water and a clot of mucus for a human who is used to perceive the world through a set of stereotypes, object objectification, reductionism, and stigmatization? Uh, the fluids project uh, reflects on the human perception of fluids, the mediating role of myth and metaphor between a human and the world, the world outside of a human and his uh, authoritarian interpretations. The project suggests us to forget that water is changeable, deep and unpredictable, and slimy substances remind of rotting and creep of organic life and rotting on rational anthropocentric systems. The project purposes to proposes to explore flu fluids as living matter that exists outside the symbolic field, continuously emerges, gets density and viscosity in symbiotic interaction with, uh, with other matter. I strive to understand how to be enchanted by the matter itself, because the enchantment is the significant part of empathy and finally the part of the whole complicated process of becoming this. Here is the documentation of my prototyping work. I started with collecting water samples, then I blended the water with agar. 
in the end, I had three substances, pure water, water with agar, and an egg albumin. After the, um, sorry, after uh, that, I looked at them under my microscope with not high magnification, but it was enough to see the beauty of the substances structures. And as you can see, they are exceptionally beautiful. As for the project itself, I propose to look at these substances through several, several layers. The first layer is just the texture layer. When you see these substances just in containers, you can push your hand inside these fluids and feel them and the difference between them haptically. The next layer is the surface layer when you can see these fluids under the microscope and reveal their beauty. And the third layer is the living matter layer. At this layer, we need the highest magnification to see living organisms and not just organisms, but the movement of particles of all these substances. Maybe passing through all these stages, observers will be able to feel enchantment and empathy. Also, I propose to use the sound layer, and I was inspired by audio microscope by Joe Davis. His description of this construction doesn't sound crazy or unreal. So I think it is possible to use uh, the similar technology in trying to listen to the movement, listen to living matter inside these three types of fluids. And finally, I'd like to say a couple of words about scientific instruments such as microscopes to observe the fluids. In this case, science doesn't objectify non-human entities for its own purposes, but acts as an intermediary, intermediate, sorry, uh, it acts as an intermediary between the matter and the human. With the help of scientific tools, we are able to look at the non-humanity in a more neutral and estrangement way, to succumb to enchantment not of the image, but of matter per se, and to discover empathy towards marginal substances. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Uliana, mm -hmm. are, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I would uh, like firstly to say uh, about the project uh, that was mentioned above, uh, um, that uh, is uh, the body of water. Uh, it was uh, a project of uh, installation, uh, a spherical one. And uh, it should uh, have uh, contained uh, like a uh, kind of visualization of a data set took from uh, all of the possible um, water bodies from uh, St. Petersburg. And uh, this data set should be uh, visualized like a, uh, a network of rivers, but in 3D. And uh, it should like... Um, uh, be like alive. <laughs> this was the idea, if uh, speaking briefly. And uh, also, it uh, uh, in my team there, they there were also Anna Kaplan and Maria Mashenska. Uh, we made it together. Well, and now I'll speak about my own idea. I'll share my screen now. Uh, well, my project is um, called uh, The Battleground, uh, and uh, it is uh, a story about uh, one pond in my neighborhood. And uh, this is the location. Um, <laughs> the pond uh, is probably a bum hole. Uh, that remained from the uh, Second World War uh, because in this area it is a Petergoff uh, lane uh, that you all know and uh, here was the the edge of the uh, siege of the uh, of Leningrad during the war and it was the place of uh, really really uh, huge battles and uh, uh, a lot of people died here, uh, and uh, this is because uh, this is uh, be because I took this name, <laughs> battleground. Uh, and um, well, uh, it is located here, 
uh, near the uh, new built um, uh, district uh, that is called the Baltic Pearl. Uh, and um, the, uh, firstly, I went there to take samples for the course, uh, for the aquaforming course. Uh, and uh, I found in, in my samples uh, a life, uh, a living creatures. <laughs> And uh, the idea came from this. Uh, well, uh, these here are some um, like uh, similar projects. Uh, this one is a research uh, uh, through scientific research about uh, bomb craters. One team of uh, Hungarian uh, sci scientists uh, took uh, samples from uh, bomb holes from the Second World War, but in Hungary. And, uh, and they found there some rare species, rare and vulnerable species, and it was not expected. And it was a uh, very fascinating uh, experience of them. And uh, this is uh, a German uh, photographer called uh, Henning Rogge. And uh, uh, Henning Rogge uh, is making such uh, pictures of uh, uh, bump holes that were uh, that uh, uh, have remained from the uh, World War II, but in German forests. So it's a kind of the opposite side of the problem. Uh, and uh, he has a series of works. You can look uh, in the internet for them. Well, uh, this is the place. This is a video what is located there. Uh, it, is, um, it is located near two roads. This road is uh, the Petergoff uh, Lane. Uh, and um, I will tell you later what, what has happened here. Uh, well, uh, and uh, here are the species that I found. Uh, the inhabitants of this small pond uh, and uh, this one is um, a, an uh, odonata nymph or, or a dragonfly nymph odonata is a common word for all the dragonflies well and uh, here is uh, some video how did they move and this is daphne and this one too so uh, what is my project about? It is about um, making parallels between our uh, human story, between this historical uh, historical heritage that we have here, that we have here who lives here, <laughs> and uh, the story of these creatures, because they live their own life and we live our own lives. And uh, it could be like, I think we can find something common and something that uh, doesn't match. Well, and I made such a ta table uh, of the species that uh, Daphnia and Odonata nymph and uh, how long do they live? For example, Daphnia lives uh, a uh, maximum two months, uh, and uh, Odonata nymph uh, lives uh, can live uh, up to four years, and then it becomes uh, a dragonfly uh, through uh, metamorphosis. And hu uh, human mm, humans <laughs> live, uh, you know <laughs> how much. Uh, well, uh, and uh, this is interesting to uh, connect that li life spans. Well, and now uh, I'll briefly tell about the uh, human part in this project. Uh, this place uh, is um, a tram uh, line, uh, a very old tram line, and uh, it was built uh, uh, before the World War II. Uh, and uh, this is a German uh, picture uh, of a fascist army uh, when they uh, occupied uh, that uh, a range of uh, uh, 
the, a range of trams. Uh, they occupied them and they were uh, very proud of it because it was kind of trophy, because it let them go further. And this is uh, Lvov, uh, pa uh, the palace of uh, Lvov, <laughs> and it is uh, in Strelna. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one of the occupied trams. And uh, it was the uh, place where uh, uh, exactly there the German army was uh, at the closest point uh, to Leningrad. And uh, also uh, there happened uh, the tragedy of the 124th Tank Brigade uh, when they um, uh, went to stop the Germans, but they didn't manage because the Germans had the uh, artillery there and uh, they, the forces were not equal uh, and uh, nobody survived, nobody except uh, only one uh, uh, tank. Uh, and uh, it was a, a really tragic moment because uh, uh, it could not happen if there were some other decision. Well, and it is a, a map. Uh, this is uh, Strelna. Uh, and uh, this is the, where, the place where is the red row. Uh, arrow the red arrow is uh, the exact place where where the pond is located so i mean that uh, it is uh, a huge historical place with uh, a lot of victims and a tragic story and uh, the tanks were moving from here to stop the germans and here was uh, a marine landing but uh, nobody survived even here. It was one operation to stop the fascists. Well, in the in the October uh, 1941. Uh, these are the uh, German, uh, how to say, I forgot. <laughs> I mean, uh, the defended German technique. Well, uh, and uh, my project aims to uh, creatively interpret uh, the uh, historical parallels uh, with the uh, the lives uh, uh, of these organisms and this, these species that live there uh, to find uh, to, to look at the historical subject from a different angle how Robertino says uh, that you have to um, to know how to look from uh, different angles <laughs> at one problem and i'm really interested in it because uh, i live the, uh, here and also uh, i hope that uh, if i go more uh, to the scientific uh, point of view i will uh, be able to learn more about it i think that uh, in this project uh, a biologist could help me and uh, to uh, improve uh, the idea with the more scientific information and scientific methods. Thank you. Thank you, Liana. So do we have maybe questions to Robertina? Uh, is it possible to ask uh, uh, like, uh, um, <laughs> uh, like just ask or it's better to write in the chat? No, you can ask us. I think it's good. Aliana, you agree? Uh, could I ask then? <laughs> Uh, I would like to ask uh, in this aqua forensic uh, project, uh, oh, I didn't understand why uh, the uh, microorganisms uh, started to disintegrate because of the chemicals or what? Yeah, because uh, uh, in different quantities of chemicals, they started to dilute their bodies, you know, because the chemical the molecular levels of um, pills 
are uh, through different, so they can be very aggressive towards their shelves or their inner bodies. And this is like very much uh, present there. And thank you for asking me this because what I forgot to say before is that our human bodies are very wasteful. When we take the pill and we consume it, only 20% of the pill is actually then uh, integrated into our body. Everything else goes out into the sewage system. So through this, there is lots of um, presence of it in the oceans and seas. I see uh, there are also some colleagues, like I see Votol. I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> hi. Yeah, Can so. you hear and see me? Yes. Yeah, I have, a, I have a fast and quick question. Actually, it's a few questions in one. Uh, do you think there will be more and more uh, projects dedicated to ocean uh, in, in, in an absolutely different spectrum of problems and topics in the future? And if yes, uh, maybe you can share, not for me personally, but for everyone, some links and maybe some, I don't know, uh, give some suggestions uh, where exactly to share, to send, to uh, promote ideas and projects. Uh, for example, I myself started to work for the first time with the with the topic of the seas. I, I had a project dedicated, which is still ongoing. It's it's done as an installation, but the research is still ongoing, and I still don't have a documentation of it. And um, in the future, I want to travel with this work if it will be possible. So uh, that will be nice uh, if 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 I and the whole public will know uh, the direct uh, institutions or maybe festivals or I don't know anything what, what could be interested in uh, presenting or at least um, reviewing and I don't know give some feedback about the projects uh, or the topic like that and uh, I think it's it's it's, it's uh, you are absolutely right that um, like Saint Petersburg. And the whole Russia is is very very interesting and comfortable for working um, on this topic because there is no other country in the world that have so many seas, internal external oceans like we're surrounded absolutely everywhere with the with the seas we have rivers, etc. And there is there is Baikal Lake and you know Caspian Sea so so many different opportunities and I think it's, it, it is from many angles extremely interesting. Um, topic uh, from ecological historical and so on so uh, if you can provide something and probably it more will share it somehow after the zoom conference will stop uh, that would be very nice um, i can of course ask you directly that via email or somehow else but i, I think it would be nice if students and the whole audience will see it as well no, I think with all it's like, uh, Dimitri, it's really great that you said hello because I just wanted to call you out. I was like seeing before who is here with us. And yeah, um, I will definitely share it also. There is TB21, which they are doing lots of this kind of ocean stuff and so on. And I just noticed that they have also again open call outside for fellowships. They're from because Austria. I think they are based in Austria, but they have also space in Venice. I don't know them personally, but I follow that, you know, because of course I follow everything what is ocean related. And then also with cool artists, we will go this year with Tatiana Kuroshkina. She is preparing one trip to Galapagos. It should mm -hmm. happen last year, but you know, yeah. um, there is something happening around the world that we are all quite, uh, that we all know each other living rooms very well, I think, because of that. And uh, yeah, there is um, plenty of different initiatives and okay, it's like this, you know, you know me and you know that I'm obsessed with this kind of topic and I work on this topic for years. So I have feeling that there is so much happening about oceans and seas, but yeah. this is me because my bubble and my echo chamber also like on Twitter or Facebook or so on, I have lots of people which they are dealing with this also like scientists. So. Maybe I think that lots of people know about this and it's really great that you asked me this and I'm happy to share this. Yeah, because see. like, for example, on, on every Ars Electronica, I have been on six or seven festivals and mm. I've seen maybe like two or three projects out of 1000, you know, that are directly dedicated to ocean, to pollution, to ecology. I mean, to seas mm -hmm. in general, but I don't think more than this. 
And, That's very uh, interesting point, Dimitri, because really, like, because I'm so much easier to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can very imagine. So I can much. imagine. It's always like that. So yeah. this is this is why I'm asking because I'm new for for that topic as well. So and mm -hmm. I see a huge potential for that. And there is like so many angles, so many different uh, edges, you know. Absolutely, and also you know it's like aquatic, uh, you know, without water, what, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's really hard to navigate. And also, um... yeah, I think it's it's also very interesting that uh, so many companies, especially companies that do uh, clothes, uh, like brands like G Star or similar. Uh, like design a bit high quality brands they they do collections for last like seven or eight years dedicated to oceans somehow with uh, using some recycled materials like fibers made out of the plastic taken out of the oceans etc and it become very trendy there i mean in the fashion industry you could see many many collections from many designers many brands that are uh, I, I know it's it's a pop culture. It's of course it's not like uh, it's so much related to what we do, but it is very like um, connected anyway. So, and uh, it become a big trend and in, in in design and especially in not speculative but some kind of like design that pretends to change the world. There is always so many projects about cleaning the ocean with some very simple solution, like I don't know, uh, harvesting a special bacteria that will eat all the plastic or making some drone with the solar power that will um, like drone around the ocean and take all the plastic in a huge basket or something like that. There is always something like that in the media. And I think it's extremely potential for the artists to dig into that because you can get a lot of attention through that, especially if you will play a bit with speculative something. I mean, speculative in a very good way. If you will pr like uh, present some ideas uh, in a uh, come with some ideas that could uh, be game changers in the future somehow maybe or I don't, you know that could point to some very specific topics um, like we had we had an amazing uh, scandal uh, a few years ago I think it's, it was about 10 years ago when uh, we, ha we have an artist who is working a lot with the Arctic uh, topic of Arctic with the uh, about the ice in Arctic and <clears throat> he's very well known but he's a painter and uh, Gazprom, the main Russian company that um, harvests and sells the, the gas, I know in Slovenia has the gas from Gazprom as well. So um, <clears throat> there is a lot of uh, his paintings in, in the collection of, uh, of Gazprom. Uh, they have a special um, department that calls uh, uh, Gazprom Media and uh, they, they made some, something like an exhibition dedicated to oceans or Arctic or something like that. And there were a lot of his artworks presented on that exhibition and uh, it was exactly in the same time when they started to make new holes somewhere in Arctic and pollute the ocean and he said in the media that he is not allowing to show his works he knew that they are not belongs to him anymore they were property of the Gazprom media but <clears throat> he was very strict with that and it was a huge attention to this topic through a very conventional art you know through a very simple art, I would say, because it's just a painting. I mean, it's not art and science in general, as we do. So, and uh, yeah, through that, it, it's it also could be a nice strategy uh, for a career. Sorry for saying it like that, but since there is a lot of students here, it's it's a very hot topic uh, in in a many different uh, ways. Definitely, and uh, Dimitri, I'm happy that you brought this out, you know, it's like really interesting, like in 2014, when I started to work with this, everybody was like, <laughs> why, <Yeah. laughs> you know, it, uh, it wasn't such a common thing, and it's true that it starts to be more and more hot topic, but anyway, ecology, I think, which I think is good, sometimes also if it's mainstream, I don't mind if it has a good point on the end of the day, you know, if on the end of the day, we will not buy so much fast fashion, which would be, you know, polluting the waters otherwise. And we would be reminded that we can do it something differently. I don't mind if this is changing because, you know, for the change of the mindset, it takes some time always. You know, always when I speak, especially this about Aquatocene, which is not such a complicated project, you know, it's like me putting the hydrophone into the water. But yeah. even the picture which I have behind today, you know, you know, it's like this is a photo from underwater from Dubrunik Bay in the, um, where the boats are also, not the bay, but the, um, what's the name? Um, where Marina? The... Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, immediately you have at least three different trash stuff floating yeah. around you, you know? It's like, um, I yeah. and like microplastics, it's so present, it's all over. It's inside of our bodies back because we are using it and goes to circles and so on. So yes, I will uh, put the collection of these kind of places together, like where I, you know, uh, where I find all these informations. And it's also, there is more and more marine stations, which they start to have like open calls for students, uh, for not only for students, but it would be interesting for students, for artists in general, to have them as a collaborators inside of the projects. And I know that for Russian students, sometimes it's not possible to enter some European um, yeah. applications. But uh, so what I'm sometimes saying to people is also like, uh, these kind of works, anyway, they have to be done in collaboration mostly. It's like yeah, I, I know what you're saying about yeah, it's there is always a path. If if even if you are not a citizen of European Union, you can find someone who to is cooperate, and, and then you then, apply yeah, with exactly. them and so on. Because this, I know that there is a problematic with this. Uh, when we spoke also when I had the course with students, we also spoke a lot about this. You know, it's like uh, the. I didn't spoke when I was presenting before what we did in class, but in class, I think it's very important to speak. And then also like Uliana, and I see that there are some students which they have been with me also in the class, which I always try to have also some solo one-to-one uh, -one um, minutes with each other. So everybody can also exchange a bit uh, what could be their pets and what are the ways around it, you know? So, yeah, and uh, we have been looking also, Dimitri, at your art pieces. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's my bedroom, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 your art pieces we have been showing in the presentations. Hello, Ildar? Ildar, Ildar. How, how to say it correctly? Uh, Ildar. Ildar, hello. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. Thank so you. you've just mentioned uh, the notion of collaboration and it reminded me of how you talked about collaboration uh, with uh, your tiny ocean pets so i'm i was curious when i was when you were saying that uh, but you now reminded it uh, again with collaboration so uh, how would you describe this kind of collaboration because you have to like find some sort of so-called sentience in the creatures that you uh, describe as your collaborators. So is there, is it a thing? Uh, for example, yes, there could be a lot of collaboration with oceanic creatures. Uh, maybe you uh, know the documentary, My Octopus Teacher that recently came out. It's so, so beautiful, so amazing. I was, I was really shocked. <laughs> so, uh, so did you, really had the chance to somehow collaborate or it's just sort of uh, putting things in an ethical way sort of uh, because it's always like this threshold of which creatures uh, do we consider less or enough sentient for uh, bringing ethical questions into concern it's very interesting and how did you felt about this thank you that's very interesting topic because especially when i'm showing the piece you know like uh, the Aurelia, when it's on exhibitions or where I do performances, there's lots of, many times people come to me and they start to be like, but you're torturing them and no, no, no. So there's all this kind of discussion and I'm always asking them, so do you have a pet, you know? And then many times they have dogs or something. So why the dog is allowed to be your pet? And you have also some kind of like, it's unwritten rule how to navigate with each other. So you give them the food and they will follow you and do your tricks and hips for you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I'm a bit uh, making a funny thing, but you know what I mean. And um, for me, it's always this uh, idea from Donald Haraway's also, you know, this kind of companion species. Yeah. The species which uh, developed together with humans because we met during our evolutionary times or times of surviving and trying yeah. to... There is a lot collaborate of, with each other somehow. There is, then, a lot, uh, there is a lot of brilliant work by Maya Smrecker done on our evolution with dogs, actually. Yeah. Yes, yes. She's a very good friend of mine. She's also from oh, Slovenia. Nice, nice, nice. I'm, yeah. I'm and glad. She's also a Slovenian artist. And with her, we spoke a lot about this, actually, because when she mm. was, at the same time, when she was developing her artwork with uh, wolves and dogs and, you know, how all this kind of came together, I was working on this with jellyfish and she was like, first time i was showing it i was surprised how many people have been like asking me so how do they feel la, 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 la. 
And that's why I always try to be very clear about this, you know, the aquariums which I'm using, the commercial aquariums, which they can be bought for having jellyfish at home. For me, that was very important. So I'm not like inventing something which would be like stressing the animals in unnecessary ways. Because, you know, of course they didn't sign the contract with me that they will come to collaborate with me. And the payment is quite, you know, it's a uh, shrimps which I give them to eat. But um, what I try to do and what I developed through the years also, because you know, now I'm showing this piece already for six years and with six years you get like knowledge how to do it. On the beginning, when I was in Izmir in Turkey, I had them at home in aquariums. So for me, it was important to understand how these creatures actually live, how they behave, what is their kind of what they like, what they don't like, you know, how to work with them. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want it to speak and work about something or somebody which I don't know about it. You know, it's the same like you have collaborator on the project and you don't know the person. It's kind of like not the thing, at least not for me. So I was trying to be clear with that. And then also coming from Izmir back to Ljubljana, when I was developing the piece, I was still having them at home as pets in the same aquariums. Mm -hmm. Because I was trying to understand everything because, you know, especially in the exhibition places, lots of stuff can go wrong. People is coming, people have yeah. can have like different things. Totally. It happened to me actually on the opening of exhibition, first time when we had been showing that somebody did pour wine into the tank, <laughs> red one. So that's why we saw right. it. So yeah. then very quickly we changed the tank and, you know, but people, you know, so, um, yeah. Yeah. This was very shocking to me, you know, and somebody also, the same person, I think it also poured the wine into the, um, into the um, robot, so, you know, uh. you can, there can be different experiences in life and there is a way how to navigate that and I think it's very important to not stress for necessary stuff, but try to be clear, so that's why always when I speak about this, it's not just like to fence it up, you know, like I'm collaborating with them. But actually, yes, I did try to understand everything about them. I have a very good relationship with the aquarium in Pula, where they have, uh, where they are like actually growing them and showing them in the aquarium for visitors. Aquarium in Berlin, aquarium in Vienna, aquarium in Paris. So there is different points where I was showing them. And especially if I show this piece for longer time, I, it's like one of my um, conditions in sort of my tech rider towards the organizers that they have to organize really perfect conditions for the animals with uh, experts which they know how to quickly to change something because if I'm not physically there this can change and I also forgot to mention before that this really the piece where the jellyfish and the robot are together is part mm. of one collection now, which I was really, really surprised. You know, this is like something, when I was building this piece, I was never thinking that this would be ever bought or put into the no, uh, is, it, is, it, is, is it a private collection or some institution? Uh, it's a private collection. It's a big collection from uh, Madrid, which they have, have sorry, from Barcel from Reus, uh, which is near mm. to Barcelona. And actually, they decided when they invited me, I told them I have some pieces which are much more easy to, um, you know, mm -hmm. you, I was a bit shocked. But they said that they didn't want this piece because it's easy, but because it's hard. Mm. Good which point. <laughs> I was happy about it. And they also said that sometimes you have to move, uh, change also with the artist. Mm -hmm. Especially like uh, Dimitri can also confirm this, especially for the artists working in the bio art and this kind of with living organisms and living material, there is always this kind of question how to even show this in the galleries and exhibitions, because not all places are equipped to do that. Because, you know, with living animals like with jellyfish, they have to give, you know, they have to get food every day. There is no holiday, Sunday, we are closed. They don't care about that, you know. It's not their t way of being, you know. So it's very important to have this kind of uh, relationships cleared out. And I try to do this always with the tech riders, you know, inset always, like, especially for this piece. And if I see that somebody who invited me 
cannot provide or it could be problematic, then we try to find something else. So I try to do as much as possible, but there'll be always people which will not agree with that. And that's also good. Yeah, I never worked with the leading matter. I always worked with the technology and I know how uh, technology riders are uh, misinterpreted or just not taken enough care of. But in case mm -hmm. of uh, this kind of art, it becomes way more important. <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah, but you know, it's like you just have to be very persistent, you know, and on the beginning, yes, I know, I know. <laughs> and you know, you have like some bad experience, and then the tech riders just starts to have like lots of clothes, you know, like lots of uh, clicks and how to. Yeah. So, uh, it feels also for me that uh, in Russia and also in some maybe uh, more Asian countries, there is a special like sort of attitude towards tech riders. It's not a big culture of uh, taking care of tech, tech riders, and not on the side of artists, nor on the side of institutions, unfortunately. So, yeah. Okay, I so yes. This is like problem for everybody feels for their country and the place where they are mostly around. <laughs> Believe me, I was like, and I think also Botol can confirm you that you just have to be persistent. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, thank you so much, Robertina. Yeah, of course. But... I'm happy to speak with everybody. So, yeah. And I see there is also some um, questions. Yeah, there is a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, Elena, Elena Rozova, are you here with us? Mm -hmm. Because uh, I don't know who is this uh, experiments to international affairs. And I do show lots of pieces and um, this constantly. Last year it was a bit more challenging because of Corona. So I think we all have been, uh, have been in a Corona crisis. So no, with these people from Basel, I didn't work, but uh, I think I know the person who is running it, I forgot the name. But I work a lot with CTM, Ars Electronica, Zeka, in different places and exhibitions and institutions. So, um, and it's interesting always to explore new places for this um, kind of work. Do you have, Elena, some more question or this was the question which you had? And for Basel, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, Butol Dimitri was just showing something recently by them. Yeah. Sorry, I missed what, what exactly you said. No, no, there is a question about the experiments to International Affairs Museum in Basel. Do you know them? Oh, well, the... You showed uh, by them, huh? No, there is a big fair, uh, which is a very commercial, like Art Basel. But uh -huh. they also have an amazing institution called uh, HKV. Mm -hmm. No, not a HKV, sorry. Uh, oh, HEC, Chaos Elektronische Kunst. So maybe I'm pronouncing it a bit wrong. And mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, because yeah, this um, commercial work, which I also mentioned before, it's like only once it happened to me that people started to put my pieces into their collection because mostly this kind of experimental or Hybrid art is like mostly shown on festivals and exhibitions. There is very great festivals, collections, the kick festival and so on. I send this actually to students already, but I can send it again for the ones which they would be curious to look into it, you know? Yeah, but also yeah. like uh, Basel is so close to Slovenia. It's uh, just like, I don't know, 40 minutes flight or something like that. From Zurich, it's 40 minutes, I think, or 50. No, so... that's true, yeah. And yeah, like I think uh, Ljubljana is the city for this kind of art. And especially like uh, institutions like Kapelica, they're amazing. And uh, there is like um, so many, you know, projects in the past made uh, related to absolutely different biological and ecosystem topics. So this definitely. And I can add also that I'm happy, you know, like as. Uh... Either said before about Maya Smriker, and there is also Spela Petric, Sasha Skachal, yeah. and some more artists which we all work in this kind of field. We are also good colleagues. We just recently had exhibition together, first time in Slovenia. For it was like, 
didn't happen before yet, but it was great. And uh, yeah, we have quite good production facilities, but I think how much I also spoke because I, I'm so sad that last year I couldn't come physically to the St. Petersburg and to the ITMO University to work there because how much I experienced from the Zoom and the collaboration with the students. There was like a great day when everybody went to the hack lab, the laboratories that had been open. Uh, Laura Rodriguez was also helping with that. So um, it looks that you have also quite interesting infrastructure at ITMO and I'm really looking forward to see more works from students. Um, hello, Robert. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, it was a great uh, presentation. Thank you so much for that. And um, I want to ask you a question about the process of how... Um, I heard that you went to Turkey, Izmir, and um, I wanted to ask you about that. How did that uh, happen? Like, did you went to the Izmir and ask them, like, did you give them, like, an offer that which what the project you had, or they came up to you and you were volunteered in, like, I want to know the mm -hmm. process. So the processes can be different, you know, in Izmir case, they actually invited me there because I started to work already before going down uh, there with Marine Station in Slovenia. So the curator, she wanted to bring somebody from Slovenia to help to the local artists and scientists to combine their knowledge. And then also at the same time that I could also work on my work. And the situation in Izmir was quite, special because uh, the woman, the director at that time of the institute understood she really wanted to have artists there. And she actually helped me to find a PhD student so we could work together. So they can be always very different situations. Many times what I also suggest to all the artists and students is like, it's good to follow all the open calls for this kind of stuff, because there is also of this uh, hybrid residence is now coming up. And it's more and more, you know, it's like uh, in last years, I think lots of development went into this way. And it's good to have that. And then sometimes like with uh, Gino Schutisch, with the project with the pharmaceuticals, with the pills and with the microorganisms, the aqua forensic, we both wanted to work on that project for years. And we did some experiments and some um, some research already by ourselves. And then we have been waiting for the good call. So, you know, it can go both ways. Sometimes I'm invited, like to Madrid, to Matadero, they invited me already because of my previous projects and they knew them. Or sometimes you find uh, people through the open call. So this collaboration, which we had with Gino with Ars Electronica, it was actually through the open call. Awesome, I see. Uh, it was interesting for me because um, I'm also from Turkey, Istanbul. And um, oh, okay. I was also curious if you, if, you, if you are willing to have any more projects regarding in Turkey or Istanbul. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is always a bit like, um, changing, I would say. Uh, when I was working in Izmir, this was actually together key two that have been like the main uh, organizers. Maybe you heard of them. They did organize Port Izmir 3. I heard that, that's right. Yeah, so they have been the main organizers. And at that time, this was the first time that they had like international curator and there was like one curator from Slovenia. So she knew me and through this, she connected me with them. But Turkish scene is very strong and it's also very interesting. I don't know what is uh, now happening exactly, but this with Izmir was a really great opportunity. So, yeah. Okay, last question. Mm -hmm. um, from your point of view, what do you think is your best project so far? <laughs> what do you mean with that? <laughs> you have to define I mean, the one project. you were the most satisfied and you were like, oh my God. Uh, by my no, project? My next project can be better than this one. Uh -huh. My project or project from somebody else? I mean, everything you were involved in, generally speaking. Uh -huh, of my works. You know, it's always like this, that the uh, last baby is always the most um, exciting was. So these aqua formations, which I managed mentioned before that I work on with this artist who is working a lot on AI, I'm like very enthusiastic about it because we will work 
in the next year a lot on it and is something which I can do a new research and so on. So that's always driving me and it's always interesting for me. And then uh, one of my favorite, which I actually didn't speak today about it, is like Ligophilia, where I was working with uh, Mexican salamander and Slovenian protos. I was trying to have like focus more on this kind of aquatic research with uh, that. And that one is also something which I'm really in because I was a lot in Mexico City working with Arte de Ciencia team there and it was quite uh, changing for me because also being in other cultures in other continents I think it's always good for artists to because you know sometimes we can catch ourselves that we think that something has to be done like that 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 this is then the right. boundaries huh the boundaries, right? Yes. I would say. And I think it's good to be exposed to different cultural patterns from um, different places around because it gives you some other um, idea about the aesthetics, understanding of these aesthetics and reading these aesthetics. And for me, that can be always very um, challenging but also very beautiful at the same time so I didn't answer your question directly but it's with you know it's I'm understanding it's okay thanks so much thank you <laughs> thank for the presentation again it was awesome have a good day okay thank you I see that Ippolit is also with us but maybe he doesn't hear So Lina and Lina. If there are some more questions, maybe, or um, somebody would like to comment something more. Yeah, could I ask? Uh, you show one product uh, on your presentation, and it was in the Wroclawski Centrum. Mm -hmm. uh, do you understand what I'm, I'm talking about here? Because could you um, talk about this project? Um, uh -huh, the aqua forensic. So this was the installation, and yes, it was shown in uh, Vrobienal. And this is this work which I mentioned before that it was uh, dealing with. Uh, but this work we have been together with Gino, which we collaborate on the project. We have been thinking for some while how to show this kind of microorganisms diluting and so on. So the piece is actually like this, that, you know, the black um, modules, we call them, they have like uh, holograms inside of them. So when you look into it, you see this microorganism dying, but we have them as a video. Mm -hmm. not anymore as uh, real uh, animals because we decided that we don't have to uh, kind of dilute so many organisms just to, for each exhibition so we decided to not have like real material but video material and this was like one uh, decision we really wanted to do so diana do you have some more questions about this no it was actually mm -hmm. oh, thank you mm -hmm. Uh, and I see the chat from Elena Rosova. Um, yeah, Elena, we can resend you the, because all my lectures and everything, what we did with the students in aqua forming, especially the lectures about the theory and other projects, not only mine, because in sorts of the lectures I was showing mostly works from other artists, it's possible to send because um, I shared this already with uh, all the students. I'm happy to share also with uh, wider community of artists, arts and science from ITMO. Okay, um, I got one more question. If it's okay, um, I want to know the purpose behind all of your projects. 
Like what, what motivates you behind it? Why do you want to do this? If it's more like philosophical question, I'm sorry, but like I'm, I was just wondering about it. No, no, it's a philosophical and also existential almost, I would say. It's like this, you know, I'm always um, very intrigued and interested into some specific phenomenals, like as I was mentioning, uh, I was for some while very obsessed with the um, to try to understand better and gather the knowledge of uh, theoretical biological immortality. So I was really doing like intense research on that. And for me, like uh, reading and getting new knowledge and have this kind of experience of, um, especially in collaborations where you have to speak a lot with others to adjust your thoughts and to see how these thoughts can be adjust to these ideas which you would like to show also then to the public so for me that's very interesting on one hand and then on the other hand uh, the relationships of uh, us with the um, environment around us you know is something which i think is very you know basic and it can be very simple but uh, it can be also very complex and ecology by itself it's a very complex system it's not only biology it's not only chemistry it's not only economy it's all of this with the cultural components inside of this so um, and uh, yeah for each project uh, there is different trigger and uh, sometimes they are presented as installations sometimes they're presented as uh, audio pieces so it's a uh, different ways but you know it's the thing which i'm happy and i have i'm very happy and honored and privileged that i can do this for my 100 percent that i don't have to do other jobs next to it and I was happy that I could do a uh, living from this that I'm like really deeply passionate about, so. I see. It's like, a, it's, it's like quite unique. There is really. few of us like Dimitri Votolvich was speaking before and there's, but there is lots of persistence also as part of that, you know, it's not everything just like, uh, it's not easy. It can be very challenging and you have to, you know, there is something which there is always this kind of thin line between this, yeah, that you kind of survive with it and don't overburn yourself with it and so on. So there is quite um, lots of challenges coming with it, but I think it's coming also with any other jobs also. But uh, yeah, it's great when uh, I'm always happy when I spend time on the boats and do stuff there and be focused there and uh, I suffer deeply when I have to do lots of bureaucracy which is also part of being freelance artist. I see. Uh, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a sophomore student in Eton University. Would you recommend whatever you're doing right now for the upcoming generation for artist students? Of course, you know, but this is my thing. I decided that I want to do that. I don't know if everybody has the same um, ideas how they do their life. And especially like, uh, maybe it was obvious, but also when I did the workshop with students, I always try to encourage everybody to find their own voice and their own way how to deal with the problematic. I don't want to do clones of little myself. So I think it's also very different how somebody would enter into this kind of uh, environment. For me, it's very rewarding. I'm really glad and happy to be able to have friends from all over the globe and to have them also through these different views, to change the places, to experience them. So this what is like what I'm also missing in uh, this because I'm pretty sure that also for everybody this um, last year is very challenging because it's different but then on the other hand because of all these changes which we did to ecology biodiversity and so on I'm afraid that there will be more and more this kind of situations coming so um, but yeah it's like it's I, I like it as a lifestyle but it's um, 
something which everybody has to find for themselves. So if you are very interested into it and passionate about it, I think it's good to prepare yourself and get ready to be um, out there. And for me, what is very important, and we do this like, uh, I'm again saying with Dimitri, but also with Sasha Spela and all these other artists like Margarita Pevere, Kat Austin and so on. It's like, we try to help each other in the sense sure. if I'm like introduced to somebody and I see that this person could be a very good match for them for exhibitions or whatever, we try to open the doors to each other. And that's very important. You have to hold back to each other also, not just like um, the people which they're very in competition with it. I'm thinking they don't have such a big success, but that's my opinion about it. I see. Thank you for your answer. Thank you for your time as well. Of course. Um, is there some more questions? Um, there is a question by Maria in the chat. Uh -huh, okay. Um, it's about, well, maybe I can read it. Um, may you tell a bit more about the discoveries you made in your artwork concerning immortality? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, immortality was something which I was, I mentioned, it was like the topic that I was really interested in because, um, you know, Ep of Gilgamesh, you know, first written verse of the humans, they have been already mentioning that. You can find the patterns about this kind of craving for the living longer or living forever also in different cultures, religious, and on the end of the day, also on the biotechnological advantages and the ways how we approach our life or um, enhancements also, I would say, and so on. So I never did it like as presence in my artwork as the main topic, but many times it's like one of the back topics. So one of my works, which I mentioned before already, Ligophilia, speaks about that uh, because there was working with uh, Mexican salamander, which they are used a lot in uh, biology as a model organism for ex understanding the regeneration of our inner bodies and regeneration and immortality. They're quite topics which they can come together sometimes. And uh, also by the jellyfish, especially in the beginning, when I started to work with them, I went very deep into research how quickly they can regenerate because the species which I work mostly uh, of the jellyfish, it's like moon jellyfish, it's a, also a model organism in biology and they can also regenerate very quickly because they have lots of collagen. So there are some resonances of specific topics inside of my artworks, which they don't have to be always in the foreground, but they speak about that. So mostly about this immortality is this Aurelia One Plus Hertz, the installation with the robot, and the legophilia, both of them, they're going this way. Do we have any more questions to Robertina? Well, it's been almost two hours. <laughs> I think lots of people disappeared already. <laughs> yeah, so maybe if there are no questions, I would like to thank Robertina for being with us for your uh, interesting projects that you pre presented and also for inviting students to participate in your artist talk and to be able to present um, uh, with you. So uh, if there are no more questions, so I think that we can um, stay in touch. 
And thank you everyone for being with us. Thank you, Robertina, for your time, for your efforts. I'm thank also thankful for you for invitation. I hope that we will one day that will happen this day that I can also come physically to St. Petersburg and we research all the rivers and all the <laughs> oceans around it. <laughs> because this was like, uh, I was really, um, through my work, I'm pretty sure you understand why I was so enthusiastic when I got invitation. <laughs> um, I, yeah. yeah, that's true. There are so many, so we hope that this situation will come back to normal one day and we'll be able to see here in St. Pete and uh, be able to work on the projects. Um, yeah. And I would also like to say special thanks to Victoria and Ulia that they came to speak also about their project because I know how challenging it can be present something which is still as an idea. Uh, because with most of the students, we did this like Alina and uh, Tatiana and Laura could experience the fresh outcomes of the workshops. But I hope that everybody also got some interesting knowledge and ideas from it. And as I mentioned, I'm happy to share also my um, lectures and this what we shared with everybody. And yeah, Butol and Ipolit, thank you for coming also. Good friends, which I'm happy to see, and I hope to see them again on some festivals somewhere. So, yeah. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, stay safe, and the recording of this video will be put on YouTube. So, if it's for those who missed it. Thank you, Robertina, once again. Yeah, thank you. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye-bye.